Now, there's a reason I called you both here. I regret to inform you that there was an attempt on my life. Whoa, 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 whoa. Somebody took a shot at you? Yes, the house plant. Now, I have reason to believe that these attacks are not isolated incidents. We found one common factor. Katira? My scanners detected traces of celluloid on the octopus and the house plant. Am I the only one hearing that? I'm still trying to wrap my head around the idea of a houseplant trying to kill you. Hey! Hey, okay, this is not funny, alright? I had my head in an oven! I could have roasted to death! Whatever's doing this is out for blood! My blood! And I don't like it! Yes, I can agree that it was quite a frightening ordeal. Die! Die! I can't. I've got a list of suspects. Right now, Crazy just man. Dogu. But he doesn't have the kind of power to do this. Um, what about whoever he was yamming through on the phone? What about that guy? Hmm? Yeah, that came to mind, but whoever or whatever Ogu's boss is, what we do know about him is that celluloid is his main power source. Cha. Totally. Is there a reason he has to be here? That gets him out of the basement. Anyway, if these attacks continue, I don't think I'm going to survive, so I'm going to need some protection. Well, isn't that why you got the invisible woman in the first place? You're right. You're right. But I'm talking about expanding on my arsenal. Well, well look, I already got you the gun. I'm tapped no. out. I, I know, I know. That's why there's a better gun. A gun suited for things like this. And that brings me to the reason why I brought you two here. You two are gonna find it for me. Hey, look, kid, I can do this no problem. I'm just worried about Rocket over here. Dude, you're gonna like get a gun, man, and like do some stuff with it, man. Like, how do you know that, man? Dude. Well, give him something to do. But I'm warning you, it's not gonna be easy. Please, please, kid. Who are you talking to, alright? Alright. Here. Go to this address, find the gun, bring it back to me. Alright. You got it, kid. A, uh, invisible woman. We'll uh, try to keep the line of communication open. Very well done, Mauricio. Oh! Oh, again with the real name! My apologies once again. Ah, no problem. Alright. Let's go, Pebblehead. Right, dude, right. I said let's go! Oh, dude! 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 Do you think they'll be safe, Hugo? Eh, the Don can handle himself. In the meantime, you have a video to do, oh, sir. Oh, right. Is, uh, is everything set up? Queued up and ready to go, sir. Awesome. <sighs> I can't believe that. I almost forgot about this. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Hugo Strange. One more time. Forgive the construction in the background. I have no control over what my neighbors do. Although I would like to. So, Paranormal Activity 2, let's talk. I'm not quite sure where to begin with this movie. Again, I enjoyed it for what it was, for what it was trying to do. I, I really do enjoy this series. It's kind of strange. This is the first thing that I enjoy and yet it does not do for me what it's advertised as it says it's supposed to do, if you know what I mean. If you get what I'm saying. Basically, what I'm saying is it's a scary movie that isn't scary but I like it and I appreciate it but I'm not scared by it. 
So can I truly say I enjoy it? I'm getting off topic. So let's start with the things that I liked about it and then that'll get me to the things that I didn't like about it. So the things that I liked about it is that I think in this one it really did a better job in terms of building suspense. Um, in, in, in terms of building to the climax, I think it did a better job than the first movie. Um, because the first movie just... It, the first movie is a little bit slower towards that build than this one is. Um, by the way, this is not a review of the series, so if you're watching this, there will be spoilers here, and if you haven't seen the Paranormal Activity series, I suggest you stop watching this video right now. So, that was something I liked about it. It really did set up um, a nice bit of suspense. Um, by the way, shout out to Sir Buckethead, um, who actually talked about this um, ahead of time. But this movie gave us more of an excuse as to why there were cameras around, um, which is something I really enjoy. Um, side note here, um, what I was thinking um, in terms of a movie like this that, that relies on um, hidden cameras, how they're going to change the dynamic of that movie. The change of the dynamic of the first movie into the second movie without copying itself. And they did it with security cameras, which is perfect. And this is something that I've always said in terms of slasher films. Now, I haven't seen Scream 4 yet, but as a concept for Scream, I always thought that a slasher film would be better presented if it were reality. What I'm saying is if you're watching a, a security camera and all of a sudden you see, you know, Ghostface popping up behind somebody, you know, that's gonna freak you out. And if it's presented in a sense where it's real without a dramatic score, without background music, without any of that, this would be a thousand times scarier than just seeing him chase Drew Barrymore. You know what I'm saying? Once again, another topic. So the security camera idea was something that I really enjoyed and it gave us an excuse as to why we have dynamic angles and all this other stuff. That being said, I really liked the dog in this movie and I'll, I'll get to the dog later because that's something I really need to talk about. Um, but yeah, the security cameras was something that I really liked um, in this movie. Um, the one scene where she's in the kitchen and all of a sudden all the uh, all the cupboards just fly open. I thought that was really cool. Again, cool, but not scary. So that was something I really liked. Um, let me see, what else, what else? Oh yeah, um, the scene where she gets dragged out of the baby's room, I thought that was really cool. I thought that was really well done. Um, even though, like, acting-wise, it was probably kind of goofy to do, but at the same time, Okay, let me set this up for you. You can test a good actor when they're acting against something that is not there and make us believe that something is there even though visibly we don't see anything. And that's something that was really well executed in that scene um, because I really felt like there was something, you know, pushing her out of the baby's room, like whenever she went to go see Hunter, she like just fell over and I didn't, I didn't see a pratfall there. I didn't see like that as a planned event. That, that worked very well for me. I really liked that. So that was great. That being said, let me get to the bad stuff. I said I was going to mention the dog again. Now here's my, here's my deal with the dog. The dog, for the most part, is the only rational character in this entire movie. Um, that and uh, um, uh, Martine, the um, the uh, the maid, which I have so many issues with that. It's not even funny. But it's just this video is already too long as it is. But when the dog bit the big one, I I was officially like, well. There goes the only logical character in this movie. And I say that because you have um, Katie's sister, Christy. Christy, thing. Remember her name. Holy crap. Christy. And her husband, Dan, and Allie. 
Ali? Ali. Ali. Once again, it's the same problem I had with the first paranormal activity and the fact that I really believe her struggle. I really believe her that she's psychologically tormented by this stuff. I really like that and I really like seeing Katie in there and their interaction and I'll get into that later on. But I really liked Christy um, being psychologically tormented. That being said, Daniel is not as big a douchebag as Micah, but he's an idiot. And I say he's an idiot because day after day he keeps having to put the pool cleaner in the pool and yet doesn't realize that, you know, there's no way that thing could have gotten outside of the pool. I've seen pool cleaners before, so I know that there is no real pressure setting that can pull it out of the water like it was over there. That would be a hell of a lot of pressure. And pool cleaners just don't have that amount of pressure to them. Seriously. So already I thought he was a moron. Um, the whole thing with the pan falling. Again, not a very compelling argument he's making, but I mean, I understand he's trying to rationalize it. I, I understand he's trying to, you know, you know, he's trying to really wrap his head around it in a logical fashion and just doesn't work from my perspective from watching the movie and from you know just a logical perspective because there's no way you can really hang a pot on the edge if it's hung it's hung you know what i mean all that aside uh with the firing of martine just because she's you know waving some candles around i mean hell she could have just said she was burning incense you know or you know, trying to get a better scent into the house. Anything, but no. So, that was just random and out of the blue. And and another thing, after he fired Martine, he's in the room with Allie and, he, and, he, and he's, okay, earlier on in the movie, he said he was gonna give her a good recommendation, all this other stuff, he just didn't want that stuff in his house. Understandable. And it came off as if he, as if he really did like Martine, so that, that was cool, but when he's in Allie's room and she's painting her toenails and whatnot, he's talking about, oh, she's over there strangling goats and this, that, and the other thing. And I'm just like, you're an asshole, dude. You are a major asshole. Allie, for the most part, was a good character, but she was just as stupid as Micah. And by that, I mean, she was actually elated by the idea that they had a ghost in their house. Also, the whole thing with, oh, we should do a seance, we should do a seance, we should do a seance. And I'm sitting there going, you all deserve it. You all deserve to die. That's, I don't care about you. I, I really don't. Because you would have to imagine, she's a teenage girl. I'm pretty sure she's seen a couple of horror movies and she knows how this whole thing goes. Plus, just about any internet article on ghosts and spirits would tell you, yeah, don't have a seance, don't get a Ouija board, don't do these things. And yet, she goes and does them because she's an absolute dumbass. You know what I would do if someone came up to me and told me there was a ghost in my house? The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. Bingo, problem solved. I would not attempt to communicate with it. That being said, um, the whole thing with Martine and the fact that she knows exactly what to do in that situation, it felt very stereotypical. Like, I, I really don't want to say that, but at the same time, she she was their maid, she could only speak Spanish, and she was into all this esoteric stuff, and it's just like, could you have not found a bigger cliche than that? I'm serious. I mean, at least in the first Paranormal Activity, they had to call somebody and, you know, get someone's expertise on this. 
uh, uh, you know, an older Caucasian gentleman who you wouldn't expect to be into all this stuff, but I mean, he, he knew what was up. But it just seems like horror movies always have the foreign, esoteric, secretive type person who knows what's going on, who, who's kind of in tune with all this stuff, and it just bugs me to no end to see that. I'm not saying it's not real, but it just bugs me that this is the cliché we keep coming to. Oh, and, and another thing about Daniel, the fact that he actually, that, that he's the one responsible for Katie's haunting in, in the first movie, uh, just really a class act, bro. I take that back, I understand that he wants to save his wife and all that. I get it, I, I really do, but damn. Like, the balls on that guy. Damn! Also, I'm not sure if they said it had to be a living relative. But, I mean, I, I assume that's a given, but I mean, I'm just saying that might have been a loophole they could have exploited if, you know, the language was unclear, but never know. So, now on to my thoughts as far as where Paranormal Activity 3 and 4 is going to go. Throughout this entire movie, Throughout the first movie and the second movie, they always talk about um, the pictures they lost in the fire, this, that, and the other thing. Here's the thing. In Paranormal Activity 1 and in Paranormal Activity 2, there was fire present. In the first movie, the Ouija board set on fire. In the second movie, the stove was on fire. With those two things, you know... And plus, with the constant mention of the fire and the pictures they lost in the fire, I think that the climax of the third movie is going to be the fire and is going to show all the events leading up to that. Also, something really interesting in this movie is that uh, Katie said that Christy is going to be just like Mom. So it sort of shows that this is kind of a female thing that just about, I'm, I'm assuming every woman in their family had dealt with this before. So it goes from Katie to Christy to their mother, or their mother from Katie to Christy, you know, and so on. What I'm saying is probably in Paranormal Activity 4, we're going to actually see what their mother had to deal with and how, you know, what was her whole situation and possibly maybe get the whole origin as to how this whole thing started. Because I really don't think it was a deal with the devil sort of thing because they don't seem that rich and they don't seem that powerful. So I'm curious as to what got this whole thing started, if anything at all. Also, another bad thing about the movie is that when they finally switch over to the, the handheld cam, like, I understand Allie's reason for using it, like she wanted to document everything that was going on, and that's a little bit more understandable than... Actually, no, they're, they're kind of both the same here, but I think she wanted to document it because throughout the entire movie she was getting blamed for all this crap, but it wasn't her fault, and I'm pretty sure she wanted to have some solid evidence herself of the actual experience, just to have it on tape, um, just to back herself up, you know, with the security tapes and whatnot. So I, I get her reasoning for that. That being said, when they're in the basement, well, when Daniel's in the basement and all the lights have shut off, um, I'm, I was thinking, does either of them own a flashlight? Because I understand cutting the light on your camera and using the night vision filter, um, like so. You know, like that. I mean, it looks kind of weird, but I mean, if that's the only way you can see, then I suppose that's the only way you can see, right? But no, I'm led to believe that in this house, none of you don't own a flashlight at all. So that was something that just bugged me. Overall, I can say, um, with full honesty that I am looking very much forward to Paranormal Activity 3, um, although still the series is just not scary to me. It's just not, it's really cool, it's, it's very interesting, it's incredibly interesting, but it's just not scary and I suppose I appreciate it on that level, um, where it's just interesting but not 
scary. Whereas the Blair Witch Project was just not interesting at all. Completely. Just not interesting whatsoever. But these are actually the better quality Blair Witch Project. Like it's Blair Witch Project for our generation and the thing is it's actually working for this generation. A lot of people seem to be enjoying these movies. A lot of people seem to be genuinely terrified by them. Um, I was watching them last night. All the lights were off in the house. Um, I was pretty much home alone. Uh, and nothing, you know, nothing at all. And it's not like I went into the movie saying, oh, this isn't going to be scary. Because most of the time when I do go into the movie with the, the mindset of, oh, this isn't going to be scary, I end up actually being genuinely terrified. Um, but that's only with movies that are actually scary. Again, this was not scary. This was just very interesting. And I'm very intrigued with the mythology. I, I really am. I really like the story structure and how they keep backpedaling, if that's what you call it, or backtracking the story. Um, so I'm really looking forward to the third installment and what we get in the story. I hope that my speculation is true about the fire being the climax. And for Paranormal Activity 4, because I think they're actually going to try to get eight movies out of this, like the Saw series. I didn't read that anywhere, so don't go saying they're going to make eight Paranormal Activity movies. Don't go saying that. I'm just saying I think they're going to replicate um, these movies with the Saw series, and they're going to make, you know, eight Paranormal Activity movies. Um, one more thing, and then I'll let you go. These movies do run the risk of spiraling out of control in a very dangerous way. And by that I mean they can only keep coming back to the footage pastiche for so long before it starts to get really old. And when it does, they're gonna have to venture into the realm of real cinema. And ultimately, I think that will very much so hurt the movie's quality and its, its kitsch value. If I'm right, and they're really trying to get eight movies out of this, then how far of the story are they going to have to go back before we get to the conclusion, before we get to the reveal, the origins, before we get to where the series has been building to? And, you know, how are they going to execute that if they're going for eight movies? Because I personally think five movies would be the best. You know, the first one just sets up the story. The second one expands on the story and, and moves it further. The third one is the origins. The fourth one, the fourth one is the, uh, the confrontation. And the fifth one will be the conclusion. And like I said, you can make the fourth one about her mother and the actual origins of this. And the third one can be just Katie and Christie's backstory and how they got started in all this mess. So I think five is a good number for this movie. Um, I am really on edge as to how far they're going to take it. Um, because I don't know. I don't know how long they can keep this whole lost footage thing going or found footage thing going um, for as long as they have. I don't know how long they can keep it going and I'm very nervous about that. Despite my not saying these movies were scary, I do, however, enjoy the idea. I enjoy the, the, the creativity. I enjoy the effects. I enjoy the work and the effort a lot of people are putting into these movies. Um, this is very rare, but I'm really enjoying that. I really do enjoy that these people have gotten a hold of something that, that's legitimate, if you know what I mean. Like, it's not stuffed with CGI, it's not jam-packed with big budget actors and, and you know, all this other stuff. It's, it's a very small-scale film that reaches a lot of people and I really do, I really do appreciate them for that. So I'm really like rooting for them to succeed even though I don't find these movies scary. With that being said, I've talked ad nauseum about this. Um, and I will give you a full review of Paranormal Activity 3 when it comes out, so be on the lookout for that. So yeah, that'll do it for me guys. I'm out. Peace.